Hi there guys, welcome to another video. No, actually, I say good day now. Mm -hmm. Why not? It's Australian. Because you're only saying it because just because be I'm trying yourself. to be more Australian. No, it's just, it will come naturally. Like oh. good day there guys. <laughs> This video is sponsored by True Blue Migration. True Blue Migration is one of Australia's oldest and most reliable migration services. They have multiple teams of MARA registered agents situated all across Australia, and they have a wealth of experience of getting people with different nationalities like you to Australia. For us, and migrating to Australia, we couldn't have done it without a visa agent. True Blue Migration has the knowledge and experience to deal with even the most complicated of visa applications. The best bit right now is they're offering free visa assessments. I know some visa agents who charge as much as $300 just for this bit. So if you're thinking of moving to Australia, let them tell you for free what your best options are, what visas are most suitable for you, and what you can do going forward. If you're in the really early stages of your visa application, or you're not sure what to do next, then why wouldn't you contact them? The service is completely free, there's no obligation to go with them, but if you do decide to go with them, remember to tell them who sent you. I'll leave a link to them down in the description, make sure you check them out, and remember, it's free. Now onto the video. G'day there guys, welcome to another video. We have officially been here for one whole year in Australia. Mm. Mm. Oh, yours wasn't very enthusiastic, oh so my, neither was mine. Oh my God. That was a big word, wasn't it? Enthusiastic, very well done. So in order to celebrate our one year anniversary, we thought we'd share with you 12 things we love about Australia. I know we've kind of gone for a weird number, but we kind of wrote them down and everything and we just came up with 12. We were gonna do 10. 10's such a boring but number. But there was too many. We'll give you 10, but you can have two bonus ones. <laughs> As ever, we have got the fizzy bubbles. You didn't cheers me. Oh, sorry. This is one, I think, that we haven't actually added to this. Oh yeah, we've got 13 now. <laughs> this, like, this is the magic number 13. Mm -hmm. So if you're not on it already, go for the red Shiraz. Absolutely banging. Although I think our budget for this one, it, it wasn't red Shiraz, it was just like fizzy red. So the first thing that we love about living on Australia is purely financial. I think that's probably one of the main reasons why we actually moved here. So it's all to do with high pay, high wages. It's just money, really. Since moving here, I've picked up about 25% more wages. Mav's kind of changed careers, but I reckon your pay is probably at least double what it was. Yeah, probably. Which while you don't work as many hours, it just means that you can work part-time or heavily reduced hours. But aside from the extra pay, there is extra financial benefits as well. So things like superannuation, which is the Australian version of the pension scheme. In the UK, not only did you have to make contributions in order for your employer to make contributions, here, your superannuation, if you wanted to, can be purely employer contributions. So at the moment, the super guarantee means that the employers have to pay at least 10% of your wages into your superannuation and this is going up every year until about 2025 I think. So from Mab's perspective she's getting 10% of her wages paid into a superannuation and from my perspective I actually pay a little bit more myself which is then equally matched by my employer. So in total I get 16% but I'm only paying for three. Yeah. Other things financially as well, we actually can claim money back at the end of the financial year. In Australia, the tax year runs until end of June, I think. And in the UK, we would pay as you earn, so the end of the financial year was always seeming to be like, oh God, are we going to have to pay money pay to the tax back. man? I definitely have paid more money than he's ever given me back. Mm -hmm. But here in Australia, you have to fill in your tax return, and in doing that, you can also claim back for additional things as well. From both of our work, we do mileage as part of our work, so we can claim mileage for that. You can even claim back on other things that you use at work as well. So for me, things like stationery, I can even claim back for suntan lotion. Yeah. Hats, sunglasses. Hats, sunglasses. But all of it comes back to a nice little bonus at the end of the year. And in Australia, the average tax refund is around about $2,000 plus. So for most people, money can be a bit of a concern. In the UK, I generally kind of felt that everything was costing us money, or we didn't really have a lot of money. Here, okay, I'm forking out loads of money on house things, mm -hmm. but I kind of feel like I have more money here. And then also you get paid every two weeks here in Australia. In England, it was monthly. I think some people can even pay 
every week. Some people do do monthly, but it can be as frequently as every two weeks or every week. But it feels like it comes around so quick. Like I put my time sheet in and then, you know, bosh, I've got to put my time sheet in again and again. And... Unless I've got some kind of big purchase, I don't really feel like I'm never having to wait until I get paid. No. Or if I do, it, it's like a few days and you really have to be impatient to yeah. find that a problem. In the UK, you could, if you had lots of bills that really needed paying, you could go for one, two, sometimes three weeks and feel like, oh, I've got to eat beans because I can't afford anything else. Now, the second thing is to do with something that Australians are quite proud of to the point where no one else does it better in the world, apparently, but I kind of agree with them, and it's to do with coffee and coffee culture. Now in the UK, man, how was I with regards to paying for or going for coffee that wasn't in my house? It wasn't something you really did. I did it, but with friends. No, I, I, just, you just... I just didn't see the point of coffee in the UK, like a Costa. People rave about Costa. I, I don't get it. I don't have Costa here. No, oh, that's a good thing. Because it's got like Starbucks, crap. but I don't like Starbucks. No, they're, like, they're very few and far between. Yeah. Australians hate Starbucks, and I never really was into Starbucks. The big coffee chains, they do have some coffee chains, but they're not, they're Australian ones for a start. Australian coffee, there's a reason why it's fantastic. And I've even come to the point where I will drink instant, but with that coffee machine I got you for Christmas, which I seem to just only <laughs> really use now because mm -hmm. you don't know how to use it. It's, it's changed my palate with regards to coffee. I've, I've not quite become a coffee snob, but I enjoy coffee now. You were shocked the other day, weren't you? When I said, oh, let's go have a coffee. Yeah. It seems to be cheaper. It seems to be better quality. Mm -hmm. And it's actually quite nice to go and do it. You go and have a coffee sometimes in the UK and it's just ramo and no one wants to sit outside because it's That's horrible. Right. The <laughs> atmosphere is nice, isn't it? Yeah. Generally, in most coffee shops you go to, the atmosphere is very chilled and relaxed. It's just nice to it's kind of nice be there rather than just doing something for the sake of doing something, mm. which ironically is what I'm doing now when I'm going for a coffee. But the layback lifestyle leads us nicely on to number three. Number three really is the kind of laid back lifestyle. I don't know whether that's a Queensland thing or whether it's, I, I'd like to think it's across all of Australia, but for us where we live, a laid back lifestyle is definitely something that we love. Mm. I mean, it just seems to be that, <laughs> is it a bad thing that no one really cares about anything? Like Sometimes it can be a, a pain in the sense of you just feel like things could be done a bit quicker. Generally speaking, you just get used to it and you embrace it and, I think it just makes everyone friendlier. We haven't had problems making friends here, have we? No. The people just are much friendlier here, and more approachable, and yeah, it's really easy to make friends here, I think. 99.9% .9 of people I walk past will say hello, or smile, or they won't just ignore you. And, it, and it's a knock-on effect as well. I feel now more compelled to say hello to people, and that's a good thing. Mm, the good. one that gets me though, is a British thing to say, oh, you're right. But they, in Australia, they'll say, how are you? And to me, that seems quite like a big question. How am I? But that's just not. Like, they don't really actually care about the response, it's just how they would ask, how they would greet you. But when I go, you're right, to them, <laughs> that seems like the big question. <laughs> we had are you okay day recently. Oh yeah. And all right, I think it's like one level up of, are you okay, are you all right? <laughs> and like, it's just a British thing, you all right mate? Number four is to do with scenery, beaches, forests, anything kind of natural. I think that's definitely on our list of reasons why we moved to Australia. and especially living in Queensland, this kind of subtropical climate, it's something which we we have really enjoyed. Mm, it's lovely. Like you can just drive five minutes down the road and... There's a national park. You, yeah, and you see kangaroos. Everyone thinks we're weird because we were excited because we saw a kangaroo. And to them it's just normal, I love you know. Being weird. And then they're like, yeah, but I saw a squirrel in England. And I'm like, a squirrel? You said that to you about squirrels? Yes. Is so it we, a red get, one? we get excited. Oh, no, I had this when, conversation with her. Yeah. She says, great. Oh, I don't know. But still, it's the same thing, isn't it? When you're not used to an animal and you've got these massive things bouncing around everywhere. You're still like that with possums now, aren't you? I like to try and spot them at night. It seems a very privileged thing when we say we can sit in the hot tub at night and watch possums walk along our back fence. I try and call them and but I don't come. Do you possum call? That. Oh. <laughs> is, that is that the sound of a possum? I don't oh. know. I don't know. <laughs> But when Manth hears rustling in the dark, she oh, automatically oh. thinks it's like a snake. Yeah. 
I said to her like, nah, that rustling is at least 20 feet, 30 feet over there. Like, as long as it rustles over there, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. It's not like we live in India and there's tigers. Like, 20 feet for a tiger, that's a problem. <laughs> but for a snake, we're good. Just don't go near it. But scenery is definitely something which we, we want to see more of, we want to explore. There's so much that this country has to offer and it, it just really doesn't disappoint. It's like what you'd see on a glass house mountain. A picture of, that someone's taken, you know, like it doesn't look real. Like you're like, wow, I'm actually here. Like it's very green here, but it's not a bright green, is it? It's quite a dull green. It's a different green. Different type of green. It's like a different kind of blue in the sky. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I'd love to think that maybe the colours, because they're new for us, this is why it's so exciting, but I'd love to think that like that's never gonna go away. And I, and I hope that all that's gonna happen is, I say when COVID goes, but like when we can travel again and when we can go and see other places and when we go and visit England, it's just gonna make me appreciate that more. I can't even remember what number this is on now. The next one is to do with public holidays and just basically any excuse to be a slack ass and just sack off work. So in Queensland, it's not even like all of Australia. In Queensland, we get 13 public holidays. And in the UK, I think it was eight. So we get an extra five public holidays. It's different within some of the states. So for example, in Melbourne, they get a public holiday just for the Melbourne Cup. Right. Do you know what the Melbourne Cup is? Football? <laughs> no, it's a horse race. Oh. <laughs> so Aussies love gambling. So they'll get a public holiday for that. We get a public holiday, it's called the Eka, mm. and we get it for kind of a celebration of rural Australian lifestyle. I don't care, it gives me a public holiday. The other one, like the Queen's birthday, that's coming up in a few weeks. We came from the UK and we didn't even get one for the Queen's birthday. Mm. But yeah, they get one every year. As well as all the others like, you know. Christmas. Mm, coming up. I am looking forward to Aussie Christmas. We're still very new, we're only three this months This year we're going in. all out. Red bubbly for everyone. You get things like long service leave as well. I think I get 1.3 weeks per every year of service and I think I can either take it at 10 years or 7 years. Oh, I don't even really know. Like, I'm just waiting for them. I've already done a year. 1.3 weeks. But that'll be a nice kind of touch. I've already done a year. Yeah. This is the year video map. Yeah, I... <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that'd be a nice thing. When Aurora's like 12, we could go on like a massive 12. holiday. Not wanting to wish anyone's life away, but it's just a nice thing. And, and everywhere in Australia does it. The next one is all to do with healthcare. And to be honest, whilst we're not sicky people, we were worried about coming from the NHS system, which is fantastic, to something which kind of seems alien to us. But Medicare is, I suppose, as close as you're gonna get to the NHS in the sense of you can access a lot of free healthcare as long as they do bulk billing. Um, some places don't do bulk billing, so you might have to pay something on top of it. I've only been there once to do with like an ear infection because mm -hmm. I probably not went in a pool that was too mucky. But that was a fully, so you can get fully bulk billing practices here. Then you can get mixed, uh, where you get a bit of both, and then you get completely private. Posh ones. I don't like the mixed ones because you don't know if they're gonna charge you or not. I don't like that. I like to know. It's a bit like going to America and thinking the price is the price, but then they just whack on yeah, extra things. Yeah, yeah. And then a tip. I've probably tried, I think I'm on my third, third surgery. But that's a good I thing just, as well. I just didn't really like the other one. Yeah, but that's a good thing as well because in the UK, if you don't like your doctor's surgery, you're kind of stuffed because you yes. get assigned it. Like yes. that's your one. Yes. Here you can be, you can go to any of them really, can't you? Don't like you. you just sign a one. page and say, you know. Full consumer choice. Yes, it's, uh, that is quite good. And I have recently found a surgery which I was a bit worried about because it's not in the nicest of areas. Um, I went in with um, a chronic cough, suffered for for many, many years, but it got worse and worse since I had, um, since I was poorly. You passed your medi medical for the visa though. Yeah, I don't know how. And I'd said to him that I'd been struggling and for years and years and he couldn't understand why I hadn't been investigated and straight away he sent me for chest x-rays. They don't hang around here if you've got something wrong with you and you've had it for a long period of time. And um, it's all at the same place as well. Yeah. So you, you go to these kind of like health centres, you just 
go next door for an x-ray, not having to kind of then go to the hospital or... No, you don't have to make an appointment. He literally just gave me what they call a script. It's not called a prescription here, it's called a script. It's probably them shortening. Yeah. And he said, oh, just go next door and they'll do it for you then and there. And, and they did, they just, they x-rayed my chest. And they send you prescriptions via your phone as well. Um, it's called an e-script. Um, so you, they just scan it at the chemist. And if you want um, an appointment, you can just go online and just book one yep. for that day. But I, I felt mm. a bit crook and I was kind of with my ear and I thought, oh, do you know what? I, I don't want to go and see the doctor. Mm. When's the next appointment? Oh, you can come along at half past four today. I can't mm. do half past four. We'll do five o'clock instead. That's unheard of unless you've got like a, a major injury in the UK. Some people are waiting like weeks, months for a, an appointment. Yeah, and it's all on this one app called Hot Doc. You can actually see all different surgeries all on there. You can you can select your own surgery that you prefer, but say they didn't have an appointment, it's highly likely that someone else would fit you in on the same not day. Not be able to get someone. Not having to wait. Not having to wait for healthcare. I love the NHS, but it's severely overburdened. And then the next one, I suppose it's mainly relative to us with a family, but you love childcare. I love childcare. Oh, you love childcare. I mean, I'm, I mean, I love childcare. You, you love the childcare in Australia. Well, no, it's just the childcare subsidy. Yeah, so childcare in the UK, genuinely for us, had we stayed, it would have been a thing of can't really afford it mm -hmm. because Samantha's wage would basically have just had to pay for childcare. So rather than paying someone else to possibly look after your child worse than we can do, we mm -hmm. just kind of said, well one of us is going to have to stay home and that would be Samantha because her wage was less than mine. Whereas in Australia, you have childcare subsidy and childcare subsidy is based upon your wage and it's basically a percentage off your childcare bill. And for us, easily, the cost of our childcare means that we can both work. And to put it into kind of perspective, um, Aurora's whole day of childcare, if we split it right down the middle, mm. Half her childcare, if I was paying for it, would be the same as probably about half an hour's worth of work for me, pay-wise. And for you, it's not quite half an hour, but it's not an hour. Mm. It's sort of like maybe three quarters of an hour. So rather than having to work the whole day just to pay for your kids' childcare, we have to work collectively less than an hour and we've already paid off her childcare. And the quality is really, really good. So I started looking at childcare providers just in case we stayed and kind of, okay, well, what would we get? And they just look ropey. What, in England? Yeah, and they always smelled of poo. <laughs> not come up with a pooey smelling one here and all right some are better than others and some are more expensive than others but generally speaking you get what you pay for and the facilities are, are, are great so I'm really really impressed with childcare and being people that don't have as much of a support network here having that reliability with childcare is really really helpful and really really important because at the very least during the day we know that we can use that kind of childcare just to have a bit of a break or do the things that we need to do because we can't rely on other people to look after Aurora. What I really like about most of the daycare centres here have an app called Story Park and even though I'm obviously not with Aurora every day I can just look on this app and they log absolutely everything from what she eats and drinks, the timings, if Pitches. she's got a wet nappy, she's done a poo, anything, they just log it all. And you can just see and they do, yeah, they send you pictures every day and they'll write a little description of what they've been up to. And so yeah, so, and that's quite good because then I can talk to Aurora after when I, when I pick her up from daycare. I say, you know, have you had a good day? And what did you do? Did you play with the water? In the water park, they've had a little water park. The daycare has a water park. Oh, it's not really a water park. It's just some water that comes Splash out of the ground park. and a mist, park. a mist thing. But I, I'm able to talk to her about it because I know, because of the pictures and the uh, and description that they've sent, which I think is, I don't I don't know of anything like that in the UK. I'd, I've I'd never love heard. To, I'd love to think that they'd have it because it's a fantastic service. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. To be honest, for the amount they charge, they should really have it. Yeah. The next one is to do with one of the main reasons why we moved here as well, and that's to do with the outdoor lifestyle. 
not necessarily to do with scenery specifically, but the facilities that there are in order to cater for the outdoor lifestyle. So the concept of an outdoor barbecue, obviously understood it, but it's free. Like you go to the park and there are free barbecues. Just press a little button, on it comes. Don't have to pay anything. I swear if that was in the UK, even if it was bolted down, someone would steal it. Oh, they are bolted down here. And they have like little people that come around and clean them. Like, not like borrowers, like it's like someone's job to come around and clean the barbecue. So you, if it's dirty, like someone's used it and hasn't really cleaned it, you know it's only gonna be really dirty for like a day. And it's I've never seen a dirty one. No, it's, it's frowned upon as well. Gen people will genuinely try to clean it as much yeah. as they kind of can. And if not, just whack a bit of beer on it. Like, Get rid of it. And all the public toilets, they're all clean. They've always got soap, they've always got hand towels. Um, We've got toilet paper. And they're also free. Like again in England, if we went to London, do you remember if you wanted to use like a, a, a toilet? I swear you the to toilet pay? in Paddington, if you needed a wee, like waiting for the train, it would cost 20p. Yeah. And you'd be like, no, I'm gonna hold it in until <laughs> I get on the train. <laughs> 20p, I don't think so. 20p for 1p. What? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just really clean here. Like, I know the toilets are clean, but everywhere you look, I hardly see any litter. No. H hardly ever. And if I do, I'm like, oh God, where's that come from? <laughs> like a magpie, a magpie's had a go at the bin, you know? I actually saw that yesterday morning with magpie. Just down the end of our road was having a go at the bin and there was rubbish everywhere. But that was because of the magpie. The next one is to do with shopping and I suppose coming to Australia and not really knowing any of the different brands, any of the different shops. We were kind of worried as to where would we go for shopping? And I know that saying this is kind of damaging to small business owners, but things like Kmart, Big W, as a shop to go to, just I need a few bits and I can get loads of them there. Oh, I love them. I used to love Primark in the UK, just for cheap, it'll do. But Kmart and Big W seem to be like Primark, you can get the clothes, but then I can also get other random stuff as well, like a hammer. Yeah, you can pretty much go there and- You can get anything in there, can't you? Big W is a bit more. I think it's posher. Uh, yeah, it's a bit more upmarket. So to compare it, I would say like Kmart is like a Primark, and then like Big W is like a Matalan. Like that. Like, yeah, I think so. And then you've got Target. Is... Target super posh. Yeah, the next level up. Okay, nearly at the end of the list. This one, I suppose, can be a concern for everyone going to a new country and driving. They drive on the same side of the road, so it's not a problem here. But generally speaking, the roads in Australia, I'm really, I'm loving these roads. Mm. They're bigger, they're wider. I know it's to accommodate bigger vehicles, generally speaking, but... Some... And they do have big, big trucks here, like American. Yeah. Style trucks, don't they? But it's just so nice having a big road and not really having to worry about how tight things are. They've got cycle lanes pretty much everywhere. They've got parking on most of the roads. It's not like you have to park on the road and then that then blocks half of the road. They've got like mm. a separate extra lane just to park in. Potholes. Like I hardly ever see a pothole. It's probably because of the weather. Like in England I thought like I'd like split my tire open oh. like weekly. Turning left. Turning left. You, you can, can turn always. left. Not always because some places they don't have the lefty bit. But it's a bit like America, where you can turn right, if it's safe, you can just turn left. Yeah. And I swear, that's one of the main reasons why traffic seems to be less here. Because you've always got that kind of steady stream of mm. cars, mm. just being able to just turn left if they need to. Our next one is to do with property prices. And whilst I know that in Australia, property prices can vary wildly, but at least for us in Brisbane, it's a lot cheaper. We managed to buy our house this year after renting. We sold our house in the UK and we used to live in a three bedroom semi-detached which was I suppose comfortable enough for us for our time of life. Where we lived we couldn't really see any prospect of us kind of being able to buy much bigger. If we wanted bigger I suppose we would have to have extended. So whilst everything was getting a bit tight in the UK here, for pretty much the same price as what we sold our three bedroom semi-detached for, we have a five bedroom, three reception area, kind of like mansion really, with a pool and a garden that seems to be like three times as big as what we had in the UK. It's huge. Mm. I, I don't think we could have ever afforded something like this in the UK. And it's 
crazy, but like to me, it doesn't feel that big anymore <laughs> because I'm just Don't used say to it. Bigger. No, we just need to do a few alterations here to to make use of the space shall we say like i still don't feel like it's my home because it's not we're still like, decorating yeah we're still how i want it to our standard and what we want but in australia generally speaking houses are i don't want to necessarily say cheaper but better value unless you're going to live in sydney or melbourne and yeah we can afford to live there and then our last one is to do with job opportunities now obviously we came here on a 189 skilled independent visa. I was the main visa applicant, I'm a teacher and I you, tagged along. You always have this kind of concern of will I be able to find a job? I have to say that as long as you're flexible with what it is exactly that you want to do, there are lots of jobs about there. If you're moving to the other side of the world, it's a good thing to be a bit open. Try something new. I mean, you are starting your life again. I'm now teaching in a school that is a completely different setting mm -hmm. from what I used to teach in. Not out of my comfort zone, but it's completely different to what I'm used to. And I love it. You never know what you might really, really enjoy. I worked in a school environment back yeah. in England. And you've always said that actually doing the respite work that you did yeah. is something that you always thought, oh, I'd rather just yeah. kind of do this. Yeah, I prefer that one-to-one -one work. And that's what you do um, now. Yeah, but I think we have both been extremely lucky in falling into some really cushy jobs. We kind of, we've made our own luck in the sense of we've not been very picky or specific on this is exactly what I want to do. As long as you're open to new types of opportunities or, or slightly different things to do than what you're used to, there, there are lots of jobs out there. That is our, what was it, 12? 13 things that we love about Australia. If you've enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to have a look at our channel and the rest of our journey moving to Australia, please go and have a look. But until the next time, thanks for watching. See you soon.